Hey internet, for this video I'm going to show how to mildly overclock an i7-6700K or any Skylake K-series CPU using a Z170 chipset motherboard. When I say mild overclock, it means an overclock that is okay to do with air cooling and without changing the CPU voltages. With that being said, overclocking is still risky business. Even though the chances of something going wrong is less than 1%, actually probably even lower since we aren't touching the CPU voltages still proceed at your own risk before I overclock this i7 6700k let's run a Cinebench test Cinebench tests the CPU rendering capability and gives it a score at the end it's a reliable way to generally rank how fast a processor is the higher the score the faster the CPU Remember that score, even a small change in speed should make it higher the next time you run Cinebench. Now I'll restart the computer and get into the BIOS. Depending on your motherboard, the splash screen will tell you what to press to enter the BIOS. In my case it's delete. Whatever that key is to open the BIOS, keep pressing it on the keyboard. Sometimes a single key press won't register and you'll have to restart the computer all over again to get a chance to get into the BIOS. Alright, your BIOS might look a little different from mine, but don't worry, the overclocking options are named similarly between Z170 boards. You'll see I'm currently running my i7 at stock frequencies of 4GHz. I'm only going to show what you need to know for mild overclocking. I'll leave the more advanced features to more experienced overclockers on YouTube since I'm new to overclocking myself. I just want to do this video for those that want to squeeze a little bit out of their system without having to play a dangerous game with the hardware. That being said, highlight advanced frequency settings and press enter. You can overclock the frequency two ways, with a CPU base clock or CPU clock ratio. For this video I will overclock with the CPU clock ratio. I think only Z170 chipsets allow overclocking through the CPU ratio and not the H170 or below. Correct me if I'm wrong in the comments. I'm only doing it the CPU ratio way because the math is easier to understand. For the i7-6700K, the default clock ratio is 40. The clock ratio at 40 equals the default 4 GHz. So basically for every one clock ratio, it equals 100 MHz. For example, changing the clock ratio to 43 43 times 100 megahertz is 4300 megahertz or 4.3 gigahertz which you see here 4.3 gigahertz is a mild overclock it's only 100 megahertz higher than the turbo clock but the difference is it's 4.3 gigahertz all the time and not 4.2 gigahertz sometimes since it's such a minor overclock we won't need to change the CPU voltage settings I know some people suggest going to 4.5 GHz, but depending on your silicone, without changing the voltages, the CPU might throttle due to heat. So I only recommend 4.3 and at most 4.4 GHz without changing CPU voltage. On advanced CPU core settings, the turbo boost can be made to go higher. If the turbo boost is lower than the base clock speed of your overclock, it's automatically disabled, so don't worry about changing that once you've overclocked to something past 4.2 GHz. You can also overclock individual cores here, but that's for more advanced users who want to validate certain benchmarks. I'm just showing it in case you're interested in taking things further in the future. Go back to the first menu. The other options that I won't go over since they're for more experienced overclockers and carry a larger risk than this mild overclock are advanced memory settings. There you can enable extreme memory profile or XMP to overclock the memory and advanced voltage settings to increase the vCore and V input to stabilize higher overclocks. A 4 to 4.3 GHz overclock is less than 10% so we can go with stock voltages and be fine with temperatures. 
you'd need a pretty bad shape for it to be unstable at that small of an increase. We can save the settings by going to the save and exit tab with the arrow keys. Highlight save profiles. Press enter. Here we can save the settings and give it a title. I went ahead and saved it already at profile 1. Pressing enter just prompts what you want to save the profile as. I usually just name it with the changes I made. Since I only changed the clock speed to 4.3 GHz, I titled it 4.3. On my second profile saved, I enabled virtualization but did not change the clock speed, so I titled it 4.0 VTD. It's good to also save a default profile on here as well, but it's okay if you don't, since nearly all BIOSes have an option to restore default settings. You can load between these saved profile settings with the load profiles option. Once ready to test the new overclock, highlight save and exit setup and press enter. Press yes if there is a confirmation to save. Press enter. Let the computer restart. Now let's run Cinebench again and see our new result. I won't run any stability tests for this overclock since it's too small of a change to affect system stability. Plus Cinebench is a real world enough test for the processor to fail if the overclock is too much. Alright my new score is 924, up from 878. That's a 5% increase. Although 5% is a small increase, keep in mind you're getting a free 5% speed boost at the hardware level without the need to get a heavy duty cooler or dangerously mess with the voltages. If you have an elite cooling solution, you can probably go even higher to 4.5 GHz without needing to change voltages. I'm using a Cooler Master Hyper 212 and I've actually had this overclocked to 4.5 GHz for a few weeks before making this video. The only reason I didn't keep the overclock was because my load temps were around 70 Celsius which is okay and not dangerous but I simply wanted the temps to be less than 60 Celsius which I'm getting at 4.3 GHz. You can download software called HW Monitor if you want to monitor CPU temperatures. You can see the idle temps are low at around 25C and my load temps peak out at 48C. I could probably push my overclock to 4.4 GHz without changing the voltages and keep the temps still under 60C. So yeah, if you're afraid to try overclocking like I was before, Intel has made it easy to overclock on Skylake. As long as you have a Skylake K chip, you will be able to overclock your chip with air cooling. There's really no reason to not give a minor overclock a try, especially if you have a Skylake K chip. It isn't like it was with the old days, changing the bus speeds and causing funny things to happen to USB ports and RAM when overclocking. Maybe I'll do a video someday in the future doing higher overclocks and changing CPU voltages. But that probably won't be for a while since I'm not into water cooling. I made this video for others like myself that just want to get their feet wet before taking a full dive into the overclocking world. Give a like if you thought this video was helpful and a dislike if you feel otherwise. And also thanks for watching.